Welcome to Podcasts Across Worlds. I'm your host, Lehua Superfina. And I'm the co-host, Spirit, aka Papa Fulu. We are people who like to read a lot of manga and watch a lot of anime. We realize that we all like similar titles and we could talk about them for hours. So here we are in Podcasts Across Worlds to talk about anime, manga, and everything else we're interested in. All right, so for this episode, we're going to talk about solo leveling. This is another manhwa that Spirit and I both really like, and we've both been really on it with this story. And then it stopped. Oh, there's, it just stopped. And we there's no way for us to understand what's happening. Even if we get the Korean version, there's just no way unless we like... Just, you know, interpret the pictures, but it's not the same. It's not the same. It ended on a huge cliffhanger. Yeah, man. I need to know more. (laughs) So those of you guys who are listening, if you don't know what Solo Loveling is, Solo Loveling is a manhwa. It's based off of a light novel. And the person who's drawing the manhwa, oh, the drawing is so good. Oh, it's so edgy. looks amazing. So suddenly... Gates start showing up all throughout the world and monsters, demons were coming out of the gates and the only ones who could fight against these monsters were like chosen people with abilities, which were called hunters. In order to close the gates so no monsters will come out is to go into the gate and it's actually a dungeon on the other side of the gate and then beat the boss of that gate. And then... As time went on, people started using the gates to collect materials, collect ore, to make equipment, or just things that help with the hunting in- industry. Hunting industry? Do you call it association? Hunting association? No. Well, there is a hunting association. There's different guilds, and there is an association that kind of monitors all the guilds. Then with the story, we have our main protagonist, Sung Jin Woo. He starts out as the weakest, the weakest hunter. What is he, E? Rank E? Uh, yeah, rank E. And his power... Did he even have is, one? Yeah, his power level was... The, I think when he was in the hospital, they measured it at uh, like 10 or 20. And they said even the lowest E ranks have a level of 70 so he was known as the weakest hunter so even though he was the weakest hunter you would think like why is he going into these dungeons why is he fighting these monsters and it's because he was doing it to get money hunters get a lot of money it's a good occupation to get a great income even if you're the lowest rank so he was putting his life on the line to support his family then one day with the party he went with, they went into a dungeon. And it was supposed to be an easy one, you know, easy for like an E rank, not too hard, you know. And then they discovered a door and they went exploring some more. And it turned out it was a trap. It turned out it was a puzzle trap and you have to solve a puzzle. And man, this scene was gory. Oh, dude, people died. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, well, it, this was a case of he's trying to get money because he wants to pay for his mother's hospital bills and put his sister through school. And this was supposed to be just an in and out job. And because he's the weakest, he's usually there just to like as a number fill because you need so many hunters to be able to go into certain levels of dungeons. And when they went there, they thought they cleared it out, but it was a this was a double dungeon and one of was like oh so they do exist which gives the impression that double dungeons are incredibly rare and as Lewis said they go through this door in this room and it's surrounded by statues and there is a tablet that has what is essentially instructions on how to beat this puzzle and i think the first one is praise the god no uh, show your faith Praise the God, and then show you... F- no, show you faith to the final one. Oh, praise him, show you faith, and... No, praise... Ah! I forgot. Worship... 
ah, worship, praise, then show your faith. That's how you beat this dungeon. But when they first talk about this, one guy's like, oh, no, I'm out, and just starts walking towards the door. Then all of a sudden, one of these huge statues just decapitates him. And everyone just starts panicking and they're like, holy shit, what do we do? Then you see this huge statue whose eyes are now glowing orange just stare at them. And people are like, oh, fuck, what do we do? In this scene, people are dying one after another because they're not following the instructions. And these instructions are freaking vague. It's literally a riddle. Sung Jin Woo, he's able to figure it out even though like they're all panicking and it's like it's life or death like under pressure he was able to figure out yay everybody applaud for him but yeah <laughs> Mu is the first person who's like okay we need to run to this statue and he kneels down so showing worship and then everyone's there just kneeling down then this statue gets the creepiest smile ever and then when they work out oh praise praise him this one person goes, I know what to do. I used to be in a church choir. And Stokes starts singing songs of praise and this statue just steps on him. <laughs> and you see like a mist of blood and they sort of figure out, oh, he was praising the wrong God. which is supposed to praise this statue. Then they're running around, they're all getting killed. And then they notice there's certain statues that have got musical instruments. And they're like, oh, run to these. And so you have people going to these statues and so, uh, Sung Jin Woo, as it with a healer who's his friend, and he's they're both at one of these musical statues, and they're like, Oh, wait, maybe it's just one person to one. So, as he's sprinting to another, narrowly getting hit by many things, he, f- he finally just noticed, Oh, shit, he's had his foot cut off. But he manages to get to the statue just in time before getting killed. And I think after that, it's a they have to get to an altar in the middle and that's where they show their faith. And one of the people assumes it's a human sacrifice that needs to be made, but it's not. It's just, you stay there and it starts like a countdown timer and people are still panicking. Like, Oh, the, f- what do we do? What we do? We do? And people, and the party leader who's missing an arm now because of everything that's been going on is like, okay, so what do we do? Uh, what, how do we solve this? And people are like, fuck this. I'm out. And as they run, out the room, the doors which are now open close a little bit, and one of the lights goes out. And there's still this countdown timer going on, and more and more people are running out, and the doors close more and more. This one guy says, uh, speaking to Sunjin Moon, says, Look, I know what you're doing, I know everything like that, and I have to thank you and everything, but I can't stay here, I don't want to die. And which so, which makes just, the timing go faster, yeah. So, he runs out. And the door's closed, and now there's only three people there. There's Sun Jin Wu, the healer, and the party leader. And the party leader's like, okay, you, uh, to the healer, take him and go. And Sun Jin Wu's like, no, I've got a missing foot. I'm not going to be able to get that in time. You take her and you go. And he persuades him to go and everything like that. And the healer's like, no, 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 no. And the party leader's like, okay, I'll take her and everything like that. And he gives her this crystal that he earned in the dungeon, which is not worth much. And it's like, I promised I'd buy you a meal once we got out of here. So here, take this. This will buy you the meal, and I'll come for the change later. And so them two run out the dungeon, and he's just left there by himself. And he's like, I'm not going out like this. I'm not going out without a fight. So picks up a sword and just gets a spear straight through his chest. And after that, he you see like a, a video game RPG. Something pops up on his screen and it says, Achie- Achievement Unlocked, uh, p- Courage of the Week. And there's this huge flash cut to him waking up in the hospital. And so it begins. Man, that, that scene where he gets... I don't mean to say it, spirited with a spear, <laughs> impaled. <with> a spear. <laughs> <laughs> he gets impaled by that spear. Oh, gosh, that was intense. Because right before that, when the people were leaving, he knew he was dying. He was going to die. 
and he's like crying. He's like, you guys are leaving me to my death. You Even though and- he's the one who said go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'm like thinking, those bastards. Well, he admitted he was being hypocrite. Like he wanted to save their lives, but he's like, yeah, but I don't want to die. I don't want to go out like this. He was making the sacrifice, but also not wanting to at the same time. He was like, I'm a hypocrite. I don't want to die. I don't want to go out like this. I don't want to die. But because of what he did and let the other people go and showed his courage, it somehow unlocked a- achievement. And the screen pop, which opens like, oh, is courage of the weak unlocked? Do you wish to accept and become a player? It's like, a player? And if you decline, your heart will stop in 0.2 seconds. And he's does it because he, he'll do anything not to die. And then all of a sudden, it's just like a flash of light cut to hospital. Would you say those agents talking to him, wondering if he got like a second awakening, would you say that was uh, important? Yeah, because that brings the point of that there is such a thing as a second awakening. Like, it seems many people think once you've awakened to your powers, that's it. But it turns out there can be a rare event called a second awakening. But what that normally does, it may take a C rank to a B. Or an E rank to a D. It, or a C. It makes them stronger, but it doesn't do the impossible. But... As we find out later on in the story, in Jim Boo's case, his seems to be limitless. Yeah, like it's not like he got a second awakening. It got it's like he got that ability to uh, to not have a cap because he's a player now. Because uh, I wouldn't call it a second awakening because it's not like whoosh, yay, new powers. It's more like. Here, you're in this category now. You're not a basic hunter. You're a player now. Hunter rules do not apply to you. And we've still not found out what a player is. Right, but we know what they can do. So let's talk about that. So he's in the hospital, right? And then the pop-up screen, like a player, like as what Spirit said, like an RPG, your pop-up screen comes up and says, okay, you need to do this uh, quest. Oh, yeah. Was you it, need uh, to do this exercise. If you don't do this, if you're not able to do this exercise, then there will be qu- consequences. <laughs> yeah, 100 push ups, 100 squats, 100 sit ups, and a 10 kilometer run. And he's like, oh, I'm not doing this. I'm going to sleep. <laughs> and then he gets tele. And it's our penalty quest activated. And then he wakes up in a desert. And he's got to survive for, is it four hours? It's like, you know what? If you're not going to do this quest, we're going to make you work. We're going to make you exercise. It's your survival. <laughs> and after he manages to survive, he gets transported back to the hospital. And he's there just sprawled out on the floor, but there's sand all around him. So it's kind of like, yeah, that did happen. And he's like, yep, I'm going to do those quests now. I'm going to do those push ups, sit ups. I'm going to run those laps. And then you see a scene of him of actually doing those quests and you're seeing that he's getting stronger. His physique is looking better. He It looks like he's getting taller because like in the first chapters, he's like this scrawny kid. But after he does those exercises, those quest exercises, he's like filling up. He's becoming manlier. It's like he's getting like hormonal growth spurts or something. As this is all happening, after he's done his exercises, he's gaining rewards that go in his inventory, which only he can see. Like No one else can see these RPG screens. And only way I can dis- think of if describing the windows right now is a... in a similar manner, is Death March to a Parallel World Rhapsody. Where you also, where the main person can also see like these screens and everything like, that, but it's only them that see it. And mm. it's a case of, oh, you've done your quest, complete, except, and then as soon as you've done that, oh, we're gonna take away uh, fatigue restored and all stamina and everything like that. So it's like, oh shit, I ain't done anything. So it's completely recuperates you after doing so. 
which he uses to his advantage later on. And then and it, uh, after the hospital, he goes into a dungeon, right? Like, he goes on with his normal life. He's like, okay, I need to go into a dungeon. I need to make some money. Well, he does that while at the hospital. He is one of the rewards he got from completing his daily quests. He got a dungeon key where he went into the subway. No, I mean a regular dungeon. Oh, oh I thought you were about that. Oh, regular dungeon. Yeah, as soon as he's done that, he's like, okay, I need to start going dungeon again. And I think the first thing he goes into is with... The son, uh, the son of the CEO of that company, the one who's got the really expensive armor, Yu Jin Ho. Yes, and as they're going into this dungeon, they think, "Oh, he's just an E rank and everything like that." So you'll just be carrying this equipment, and his uh, things. Oh, we'll give you so this much money, but you won't be taking a share of any of the drops in the dungeon. And he's like, oh, "Okay, I'm just gonna get paid," and it turns out these guys are evil the, they plan on killing sung jin woo and his who becomes his friend we call those pk players people who like to kill players son of a bitches <laughs> and they lock them in a boss room and like okay the boss is gonna kill them and everything like that maybe they'll do some damage to the boss we'll come in and so yeah but sung jin woo just like running around, killing the spider and everything like that, and s- slowly running out of fatigue. And then because he hadn't claimed his reward from his daily quest, he activates it and it restores his stamina. So he's able to continue fighting like nothing happened. And as the other dungeon is going with them, like, oh, well, they'll be dead now and everything like that. And if it's not, we'll just finish off the boss. There's enough of us here. And they walk in and there's a dead giant spider <laughs> the Sun Jin Wu and what's the other guy's name? Yu Jin Ho Yu, and Yu Jin Ho and they're like oh wait did Yu Jin Ho defeat this? Okay well no we'll do we'll have him team up with us because his dad's got a lot of money and they're like oh okay what you have to do is you have to kill Sun Jin Wu and then you can come with us and if not we're going to kill you both and Yu Jin Ho's like no I'm not doing that and stands in front of Sun Jin Wu like no I'm going to defend this person and Sun Jin Woo gets a pop-up screen like, oh, the urgent quest. You must defeat eight people, otherwise your heart will stop. And he's like, oh, well, I've got to kill these guys now. <laughs> he's like, it's, it's, it's like the program, the system, whatever it is, it's like telling him, all right, you need to survive if you don't we're going yeah. to force you. <laughs> <laughs> and the bit I like is when that one guy comes up to him and is like, okay, this is what we're going to do and everything like that. Going up to him all nonchalantly, thinking nothing can do anything. And as he's talking to Sun Jin Woo, got his arm on his shoulder and all that, Sun Jin Woo just takes out a dagger and cuts his head off like it's nothing. And everyone's like, wait, what, what just happened? Where did he get a dagger from? And then he's going round and killing them all efficiently. And the main guy's like, you don't know who my little brother is and everything like that. And Sung Jin was like, and? Like, and I don't care. You were trying to kill me and I need to kill you or else I'm going to die. So, sweet. And it turns out his little brother is an S-rank hunter who's living in America. And S-rank appears to be the highest rank. You let you find out there's ranks above that, but they're all classified. But his brother is an S-rank hunter. And he was using that as like a way to bully others or to one up others. Like it was it's sort of like a bratty rich kid saying, like, you don't know who my parents are. You're going to pay for this. It was sort of like that. And he was using his brother, who's an S rank. But you know what? It didn't work for Sung Jin Wu. You know? (laughs) The the guy died. And he, he deserved his, it. He got his head chopped off. <laughs> That's the thing with solo leveling. Sung Jin Woo is just put in these situations. He's just doing what he normally does. Or just trying to do the quiz. And he's just thrust in these situations. Where it's like life or death. 
it's like he's meant to be put in these situations to make him grow. I and- also say that there's something that's happening in it that you know it's going throughout as Sun Jin Woo develops and all that. As in, we discussed in the Violet Evergarden episode, but it's the opposite. He starts becoming more emotionless. Right. I, I want to say he becomes more emotionless because he's becoming more uh, focused. For example, his mom is his is his priority. So his focus is to get stronger. So he's following the quest. He's going into these dungeons and he's developing these powers, these buffs. Uh, what else? What else would you call it? These achievements, getting these achievements, getting these items. And he's like, oh, what else can I get? What else will benefit me so I can help my mom? And he's so badass oh i love it i love how he's being like kind of secretive but he's not really being secretive he just doesn't want to talk to people about it because he knows people aren't going to understand and he knows he's going to get too much attention and if he gets too much attention then he can't do his stuff and like i said before he gets he 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 has been he's being thrown in these situations where he's just doing his business, but because he does have a sense of justice, he helps people. Oh, well, he's helping people, but other than his mother and all that, I think the only time he's helping people is when he gets something out of it. Like, the only reason he ends up helping Eugene is because he's going to potentially get, is it 30 billion? So Eugene Ho, uh, his dad runs a construction. The constructions, they have a lot of money. And the dad wants to have a guild. And Eugene Ho knows that the head of the guild will be his brother. But he wants to be the head of the guild. But then after he meets Sung Jin Woo, he's like, no, I want my own guild. Because I want Sung Jin Woo. And, um, the dad approves it, I believe, and he gets like oh so much money. And then he recruits Sung Jin Woo, and Sung Jin was like, Well, I'll be part of this guild on one condition. Is that one condition? I think there are multiple conditions. Well, but I he- think it's when he sees the contract. Because he's like, I don't want to, no, I don't want to do it. And then he gets handed it. How about after this? And it's the 30 billion one building. And they can, but when it comes to they have to run nine, or is it nine or 19 more dungeons? They have to qualify to become a, a guild. That's why. And Sunji Wu's only condition is yeah, we'll do it, but it's only me and you that are entering. You have to have so many people to be able to do the dungeons, but it's like, okay, we'll get these and everything like that, but it's only me and you that are going in. Because the Sunji Mu can run these dungeons on his own without any yeah, help. He gets powerful. <laughs> and towards the end of the current run, he does end up becoming a badass necromancer. Yeah, that was. Oh, shoot. That necromancer episode. Wait, 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 how did he become a necromancer? Like, well, what, what was it that activated it? Yeah, I think it was he had the choice of two paths that he could go down, and one was a sorcerer route, and another one was something else. And he's like, "I'll oh, go down this route," and it's, "Oh, King of the Dead, necromancer unlocked." That's right. He every time he uh, accomplished something, like he uh, accomplished a quest, he'll get an achievement, and he always had a choice. He had to make choices, and I believe he was in the dungeon, right? Yes, he was in the dungeon that he had access to, like only he had access to. Uh, he got yeah, he got a key for it. Yeah, and then. Um, it was a dungeon where there was like a lot of knights, like it was the statues, 
and he was destroying them and then there's sorcerers in there and then he defeated the sorcerers and i think that's when he got that uh that achievement where he could choose what class is he a, is he an assassin or is he a sorcerer if i i'd say he's more of an assassin but he is classed as a sorcerer because when he goes to be reevaluated as and he becomes the 10th S rank in Korea, he gets marked down as a sorcerer. But when people see him fight during the, I'm going to call it the ant arc, people are seeing him fight and they're like, wait, this guy's a sorcerer? No <laughs> way. Because <laughs> he, he fights as a, like a he's... rogue or a ninja. Cause he's um, cause he's um, doing close um, close combat, and usually sorcerers they're like um, range, a range. Uh, they're attacks from a range. So seeing him doing like close combat, it's like uh uh-uh, uh, this is this is this does not match a sorcerer. <laughs> sorcerers usually don't have the strength for this. <laughs> well, and he is able to summon an entire undead army. Let's recount how he got to that. So he became like a undead king, right? King of the undead. He got that achievement, that class. And then let's recount as his undead army grows. Because I got so excited whenever he did rise. Oh, he got a new soldier. Oh, I got so excited. (laughs) If you think about it, it's kind of like Shang Tsung from Mortal Kombat, just going up to people, your soul is mine. (laughs) And what got me was the fact that when the Undead Army can, they can level up. With him. With him. And the fact that they can get to the point where they can talk as well. So let's see. He got the undead army. First, he started getting his undead army in that dungeon where he became a necromancer. So he became a necromancer. He's like, I wonder, I wonder which monster can I revive to be part of my army to help me fight. And I like that he was giving them names. He's like, you are so and so. My favorite one's still the bear. <laughs> So you can talk about the bear one. Tell us about that. How did that happen? Like, how did he encounter that dungeon? Why was he there? Uh, wasn't the bear when they went into through a red gate? Ooh, so, so at first he went into that gate because oh, I want to. Why did he go into that gate? He went into that gate because he he was doing it for the guild thing. Hmm. So he went into the gate. It was uh, it was a, it was a gate, but it was a high ranking one. And um, he went in. You know, people just thought that he was like a regular hunter. Everyone else was like pretty souped up and such. There's leaders. It was a really organized. There's like two parties, I believe, and they're inside. And then when they go inside, in our in the in, on Earth world, the gate turned red, and that's bad. Red is bad. It means that the gate is a radical one. Like, suddenly the level changed. And the only way you can open the gate is by defeating the boss. While blue gates, you can leave without defeating the boss. When the blue, when it's a blue gate, you want, you want to kill the boss to close the gate. But in this case, for a red gate, you want to kill the boss so you can leave. And then inside the gate, it was like a snowy... It was a snowy scenery, snowy area. And there were, oh, there was like elves. There were like elves there. And yeah. then there is killer bears. And the elves had their own society and they were able to talk. They were able to talk and they were organized. So usually when people went into dungeons, it's like against like mindless monsters. You know, it's like, rrr, rrr, whatever, kill the monsters, get to the boss. But this was a organized uh, team of monsters. Kind of like the things you see in like fantasy movies or in RPGs. So there was like evil looking elves and 
they surrounded our hunters and they were shooting them with the arrows and people were dying. I was like, oh shit. But the thing was, before that happened, though, I believe before that happened, uh, the two teams, they they separated because there is one team where there is like that arrogant guy and there is the other team where it had that nice girl and she was also a high rank. And then they separated, did their own thing because the guy who was like arrogant, he was like, OK, it's just us because we're good. We're going to like totally bulldoze through this dungeon we'll do it we can handle it and we'll take the credit for it because the rest of these guys they're just baggage and we're going to like separate for them because they're just going to hold us back and even though they're not as strong of a, as us if they can't defend themselves let them die that's how it was but you know what Sung Jin Woo he was on that other team so you know that team was going to survive it was like uh -huh, sucker think again and then that team with the arrogant man oh he was an asshole the team with the arrogant guy they encounter the dark elves whatever they were they look like elves they look like dark elves snow elves they look like evil snow elves evil snow elves and oh man they're being hunted and then I guess I think most of the team got killed off and then the guy started running away and then you see the scene with Sung Jin Woo and they're like oh no we're by ourselves. We're weak. We're helpless. And Sung Ju's like, it's okay, guys. We got this. Well, he was the only one also able to communicate them with them due to his abilities. Well, we didn't know that until after. Until after he actually encountered them. Because uh, what happened was Sung Jin Woo, he went out to get some food for the team. And then he encountered the bears. And then the bears had also had like a leader and then Sung Jin Woo he defeated that boss bear and then he was like ooh this one was powerful let's make this part of my entourage entourage my team my army because it wasn't really an army per se not yet no it wasn't an army at that point it was just a case of having minions Minions. Oh, that's a good one. Minions. So let's make this another one of my minions because he'll be really helpful for when we have those fights. Which was like so weird. I didn't think he was going to do that. I didn't think he was going to like make a bear. I was like, okay, that's cool. Next, next unexpected thing you're going to do, man. What else are you going to show me? And then that happened. And then he was, I think he was able to produce coats. Or like just warm blankets out of the bear's furs for the team. And then they were doing great. They were doing awesome. And then the arrogant asshole who was on the other team that ditched them, he finds them. He's like, hey, guys, you're over here lazing around, enjoying the sweet life. Like, wow, me and my team, we got killed off. And then everyone's like, that was your fault. You guys want to go on on your own. And why are you the only one who survived? Why did you run away? And then they're like giving him accusatory eyes. And then the arrogant guy is looking at the girl who's, quote, head of the group, quote. He's like accusing her, uh, accusing her, setting him up and such. And she's like, I don't know what you're talking about. And then you see the, the snow dark elves. And it's like... Damn it, you brought them to them. And then that's when we find out that Sung Jin Woo can talk to them. Because everyone else, all they heard was a like weird sound. But Sung Jin Woo could actually communicate with these elves. And it's like, what? Why can't he communicate? And then, whatchamacallit, uh, Sung Jin Woo was surprised too. And the elves are surprised also. And I think that's when Sung Jin Woo uh, asked him, like, what do they hear normally? And they said that they're nor they normally hear, kill them. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, they hear, what they hear is basically to destroy all the invaders, all the entrant people who enter that domain. Yeah. And, which is like kind of trippy because so when you see these dark elves, you think they're just psychopaths. But it's actually they're being driven to do that by the voices in their head. 
and then after Sung Jin Woo like kicks her ass, destroys them and such. And during that, uh, the Aaron guy, he's like fighting too. He's like, I'm not gonna let you take all the credit. He got killed. And then after that guy got killed, it's like Sung Jin Woo kind of let him die because Sung Jin Woo also uh took his soul <laughs> and added it to his to his minions. That's why I think it's a case of during his quest, he's just lost empathy. He looks down on people. And to say it's similar to, I know I've talked about this, I've made on multiple episodes now, is on like Overlord, where you see that progression throughout, like as gaining power, losing humanity. But in Sun Jin Wu's case, it's a case of why am I looking after these people? He, he sort of sees them as an inconvenience. He just wants to go in, do his thing, get out, and get his money. That's a good point because we can use that as a comparing. So that comparing to that arrogant guy. So that arrogant guy, he actually just left them on their own to leave them to defend themselves. Well, he could have just like kept them together, right? But no, he's like, nah. Leave those guys behind. They're baggage. But Sung Jin Ru, he's like, you guys are a nuisance, but I can still take care of you. Just stick next to me. Don't bother me. Don't get in my way and everything will be good. Let me handle this. That was like a difference between the two of them. Yeah. The arrogant guy just wanted to save himself. Sun Jin Woo will save everyone, but he'd rather not have to do that in the first place. He'd rather just be like, do his own thing. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the thing. He was doing his own thing, which is when he was going into those uh, special dungeons that he could access with a key, he was doing everything on his own. And then when he goes into these regular dungeons on Earth, he's like, Ugh, I have to work with these guys and I don't really want them to know how powerful I am. I don't want them to know my abilities because they're just going to rely on me more. I kind of want to just do stuff in the shadows on my own because he did do some things on his own. Like, I think he was collecting ore or something. Yeah. That them, As, like, mana crystal type thing. Yeah, he was collecting some mana crystals. Sometimes he needs to do things like in the shadows. And the whole not wanting to reveal the power because they don't want people to rely on. Similar to an anime you like and I can't stand. Sword being, Art Online? Yeah, being Sword Art Online. <laughs> when Kirito hid his true level from the guild that it was part of, where everyone ended up dying. Oh, yeah. Back to solo leveling. <laughs> yeah, back to solo leveling. So I did like seeing the progress of Sung Jin Woo. That was really cool. Like, just like in that time I got reincarnated as a slime, a lot of stuff, I couldn't predict it. A lot of stuff was, was unexpected. I was like, what else is going to happen? <laughs> yeah, I I was pretty much the same. That's what kept me glued to this series. And <laughs> binge reading it. And then I was also wondering when he was going to reveal that his abilities. Um, I was also wondering when he was going to reveal his true abilities, his true level. Because oh. I was getting annoyed of people judging him by his E rank. I'm like, don't judge him. He's going to rip your head off. <laughs> Even when he does get recategorized as S rank, he doesn't show off his full abilities the only time he really does that publicly is on the ant island where he's fighting that ant that's been killing everyone oh yeah that evolved ant, ant that evolved ant yeah and he's fighting that this stupidly strong monster that's been killing everyone and Sung Jing Wu's fighting it and it ends up feeling fear because it's scared of Sun Jin Woo. Well, yeah, that ant, he 
He knew he was powerful. He knew he was more powerful than humans. But this one human was like kicking his ass. He's like, this is not possible. This shouldn't be happening. It's like his mind was blown. His whole reality was questioned. <laughs> he was he was losing confidence in himself. An ant, an, a monster ant was losing confidence in himself. <laughs> I didn't think I was ever going to say this. <laughs> <laughs> that entire arc was really good. The Ant Island arc. Went on a little bit, though. It did drag, but it was really good. It did. It did drag. So let's talk about that ant operation thing. Um, uh, well, should we talk about that one, or should we talk about... Uh, uh, when Sung Jin Woo went into that 100th floor dungeon. The 100th floor dungeon, that was the one where he was going through it, killing all the monsters and getting that Demon King gear on it. Yes. So every time when he's done with a dungeon, he gets a key, and then that key goes to another dungeon, and so on and so forth. And then finally he got this one key, and it led him to a 100th floor dungeon. And he had to go up to the last floor and beat the last boss. While at the same time, the floor had drops. Drops are things that after you beat monsters or bosses, you get rewards. And these drops were ingredients to save his mom. He was getting these ingredients. And the last ingredient was to beat the last boss. And while he was doing this, he was getting, like, weapons, too. And then every time when he beat someone, he's like, rise! And he got, like, another minion for his shadow army. And then afterwards, he got, like, a big army. Oh, man. Every time when he was, like, fighting a boss, and the boss was like, ha, 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 ha. What you gonna do now? I'm powerful. And then Sung Jin Woo would be like, rise! And then all of a sudden, a shadow show up behind him. And it's like, uh-huh. <laughs> this. What? What? <laughs> but it is important for us to talk about this hundred floor dungeon because it's when uh it's revealed that the monsters are they're being programmed for something. Mm -hmm. And you also see that there is also other kinds of Well, creatures and everything like that, like when he meets that demon girl and also that there's a civilization happening inside the dungeon. Yeah. And it shows that not all monsters are evil. Like, there is more than what you see. Right. So, okay, let's recap this. So, Sung Jin Ru is going through the 100 floor dungeon. He... Like I said before, he got this orb, which was a drop. And then later on, he gives it to one of his shadows, which turns out he was a shadow orc. And that drop was an orb that helped with um, MP, sorcerers. And Spirit thinks it's fire. I'm not too sure. It's something. It works for sorcerers. And as Sung Jin Woo goes through the dungeon, on one floor, he encounters like these knight type of monsters and one of them talks to him one of them is like wait stop stop i surrender i surrender and it's like what are you allowed to surrender and then sung jin Woo takes off the helmet and it's a girl it's a female monster a female humanoid monster and at first she was like trying to trick him but it totally failed <laughs> because sung jin Woo is too op right now he leveled up so much already because I think the shadows also help give him experience too. But besides that, so talking to this girl, this girl in the dungeon, uh, she reveals that there's more of them and that they want to stay alive. They, there's different clans and she wants her clan to stay alive. And then Sung Ju was asking them, is like, well, why are you here if you want to stay alive? And then she reveals that like she doesn't remember. All she knows is that they're doing their daily lives activities and all of a sudden they were there. And they were told to prepare for war. And that's it. 
And Sung Ji Ru is asking why. She's like, I don't know. That's that's all I that's all I hear is to prepare for war. And that makes us readers think like wonder is like, okay, why are you preparing for war? Who who are you going to fight? Like, is it preparing war against the humans on Earth, or is there something else? Which we don't know yet. A chapter hasn't been updated yet in English. There's lots um, we don't know, but hopefully soon. <laughs> that was revealed on the 100th floor dungeon. And Sung Jin Wu was able to defeat all the bosses. He got a lot of great drops. But his main thing was to get the ingredients to help his mom to make that cure for his mom who was in a coma for a long time and later on we learn why she was in a coma well we don't know why she was in a coma but what i think it is 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 the eternal sleep because eternal sleep is when people are around those who just awaken and they're being affected by the by the mana the mana and it it's a uh, it puts them to sleep and we also don't know much about his father right so oh that's another thing oh that's the thing i really was <laughs> i'm so glad you mentioned the father because that was the one thing i was so curious about so yeah throughout the story like i want to say after chapter 70 or something, they reveal that Sung Jin Woo's dad is still alive. And he's powerful. That's why I think Sung Jin Woo's mom was in eternal sleep because the dad was powerful. I'm wondering if she was affected by the mana from Sung Jin Woo's dad. That's what I was assuming. And plus, also the fact that Sung Jin Woo himself had awakened. So being around two people like that and also Sun Jin Woo was capable of reawakening. That may have also added towards the chance of it being the eternal sleep. Yeah, yeah. We don't know yet. Hopefully we'll find out later on. The good news is Sun Jin Woo was able to awaken her. <laughs> she got out of the coma. She's awake. She's alive. Happy, happy. I'm going back to being a normal mother. Okay. The reveal of the dad, that's a mystery too, because apparently he showed up in the dungeon in America. And he just showed up. No one knows where he came from. And because of that, they thought he was a monster, but he could speak. And what they could get out of him was he's from Korea. And then that's where this other hunter called Huang Dang Su. So there's this guy, Dang Su who was the S-rank hunter that was the little brother of the guy that Sung Jin Woo killed. You know, the one that we talked about earlier. So Dong Su has beef with Sung Jin Woo. And later on, he learns that this guy that showed up in the dungeon in America was related to Sung Jin Woo. And he wanted to mess around with this guy. Like, hurt him. So he was telling um, Sung Jin Woo's dad that Sung Jin Woo and the family died. They're gone. And that was a big mistake because Sung Jin Woo's dad was upset. We don't know what really happened, but all we know is that a fight happened and Dung Soo got his ass beat. Oh, Dung Soo is very arrogant and he's just out for blood. So that was uh, the last thing we saw of Sung Jin Woo's dad. We don't know what happened to him after that. We know he's probably still in America. Pro probably. But I we haven't got to... Trying to get to Korea. Oh, hell yeah, he is. To get to his family. Hell yeah. Hopefully in the... Where, in fact, when it does start getting translated again. We will find out more because I don't want to start reading the light novel. No, because I don't like reading. It's just that I'm just, I want to continue with the webtoon because I'm a huge fan of the art style. 
Yeah. And the visualization that it's done and the action scenes and how they've been drawn and it's the fluidity of how they've done it is it is my preferred way of experiencing this story. So uh, since we talked about the Hundred Floor Dungeon, we talked about Sung Jin Woo's dad. Now we can talk about the Ant Island. The Ant Island is wasn't it an S rank gate that opened on the island? We don't know what type of gate it was. Uh, we do know that these ants uh, showed up, and it apparently it's sort of like a, I want to say like a residue uh, after result of a previously done dungeon that was raided and failed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah, I think it was an S rank dungeon because they brought together a bunch of hunters. They failed, but. I guess it wasn't so bad because they didn't go back to that dungeon. But then monsters start leaving the gate and inhabiting the island on Earth. That's when it became a real problem. And then you did see the ants leaving the island and going to the mainland and killing people. Because they were traveling to Japan. That's right. That's right. Was Was the island called Jeju Island? Yes, I believe so. And they start this operation, which is bringing S-rank hunters from Japan and Korea. All over the world, actually. Well, maybe I'm saying Japan and Korea, because the way they've portrayed it in this manoir is the Japanese guilds and the S-ranks, they're the bad guys. Yeah. <laughs> and when Sun Jin Woo is offered a place he just turned it down. He's like, I'm not going. For this operation, they contacted all the guilds that had like the best hunters, which were the S ranks. So they contacted all the guilds that had the S rank hunters, and they had all the S rank hunters come together and sort of, I want to say, uh, they create like an S rank task force. And they offer a position to Sung Jin Woo, and he's like, no, that's okay. They're like, but the rewards, the glory. He's like, nah, that's all right. I'm not interested in that stuff. And they're like, okay, we'll just do, we'll, we'll just carry on with the operation. That's fine. Because they don't really know how difficult the raid would be. And they don't really know how powerful Sung Jin Woo is. They just know that he's an S rank. They execute the operation. They go on the island. They're killing off the ants. Yay, awesome. Uh, they're in different groups. Then they go deeper into the ant colony. They get to the queen. They kill her. They're like, yeah, we're done. This should be a piece of cake now. And then all of a sudden, that evolved ant shows up. And it is killing them off one after another. Like the ones that we thought were invincible, dead. And then that causes panic with all the S rankers. They're like, we're going to die. No. But they're just, they're trying. They're fighting back, but then they die. And like I said, also, you do have the Japanese S rankers not helping. Not only not helping, they were kind of waiting on the side and they were, they, they're waiting on the side and they're also getting updates on the Korean hunters. They're like asking, like, okay, how's the status of them? It's like, oh, some of them got killed. They're like, okay, good. And it's like, what do you mean good? Hold up. Are you guys letting people die so that Korea doesn't have as much S rank S rank hunters as you guys? Douches. Yeah, the Japanese are portrayed as the bad ones in this one and as the, all this is going on and the, even uh, the Japanese and the Korean S ranks are getting killed more and more then all of a sudden Sun Jin Woo's on the island and it turns out what he did he sent one of his shadows along and throughout this uh, journey he gained the ability to trade place with one of his shadows and so that shadow has been on the island this entire time 
And Sunji was just like, surprise, motherfucker. I'm going <laughs> to kill you. <laughs> and then so he's able to fight off this evolved ant. Oh, I don't want I don't. I want to change it from evolve. I want to say it was like a mutated, a mutated ant, purposely bred to fight off the hunters. And it was a close fight for the majority of the what we saw. Yeah, because the ant, he was really fast. Like he also had the um, was an exoskeleton that was like armor. Yeah, and as he's fighting Sunji, Sunji who starts cracking it. And then the mutated ant, he's like, oh no, he's cracking my armor. All right, I'll boost up my speed. He can't catch me now. I'm too fast for him. And Sun Jin Woo's able to keep up with him. Yeah, Sun Jin Woo's like, okay, let's boost up my speed now. <laughs> and after all this, he does eventually end up killing the ant. And he does his favorite thing, which is always doing the rise. Hell yeah! And as he's bringing that back, he's bringing back all the ants he's defeated as well, and even the queen ant. And then he gets a <laughs> notification. Well, no, the mutated slash evolved ant comes around and says, oh, if you do this, you're not going to be in control anymore because they're going to follow the queen. Because of how ant hive mentality is. They always follow the queen. And so he's like, okay, I'm not bringing back the queen. Well, as he's fighting the ant on ground, he's got also his other shadows fighting the ants on in the air and on land and everything like that. He's got his entire army out in full force. Oh, oh I forgot. I forgot the part where um, when he was fighting a mutated ant, um, as a mutated ant was like kind of losing, he brought the other ants along. And then he's like, well, now there's more of us. You can't fight all of us. And then Sung Jin was like... Oh yeah, arise! His um, army of shadows like pop up behind him, and then the other S-ray hunters are like bug-eyed. They're like, "What the fuck? Yeah, this, guy's, this guy's a sorcerer!" <laughs> oh gosh, I loved it when he was surprising or getting the other hunters off guard. Oh, it's like think again, motherfucker! Think again. This that's was so far the most high park in the story it was and after they defeated the ants all the other s rank hunters from like the different countries some of them were like on the boats apparently they were surrounding the island on uh military navy boats and they were just waiting for the cue or the order to continue fighting so they were fighting off the leftover ants along with sung jin woo's shadows and you see the other countries with their leaders and they're like talking they're like so you saw the video what do you guys think and they're like was it deliberating or discussing who they want to recruit yeah, and everyone's wanting sung jin woo and they're they show America a lot. When they got back to Korea, the agents of uh, one of the agents from America invited him uh, or started to recruit him. And Sung Jin was like, "Nah, that's nah, that's okay. I'm, I already, I already chose a guild. I'm good." And then the agent from America is like, "Well, what if we can help you break through that limit?" And Sung Jin like, "Are you talking about that?" And the American agent's like, yeah, I'm talking about that. <laughs> and then they bring Sung Jin Woo to that woman, the one that you're talking about. Who can increase people's power levels. And he, she starts panicking because it's like, oh shit, there's no limit. Yeah, oh man, I was very satisfied with that one because... They were using that as like their trump card. They're like, yeah, once you get a taste of this, you can't go back. You'll want to join the American guilds, the American Hunter Association. Yeah, you're going to love this. Like they were so smug about it. And then 
she her name is Norma Selner. She touches him and then she delves into his potential and then she sees like darkness, like it's limitless. And then she comes back out and she's like, oh no. Oh, oh. And they're like, what's wrong? And she's like, it's limitless. And it's like, ha, 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 ha. you were so smug. And then Sung Jin Woo's like, what happened? <laughs> He's like, blank face. He's like, is that it? Where, Where is this true potential you guys were talking about? <laughs> and then he, and then they're like, I'm so sorry, sir, Mr. Jin Woo. Uh, we'll have to get back with you later. Mrs. Selner is not feeling so well. He's like, Shrug. It's like, all right, laters. And then he leaves. And that was the last that we saw of America. Well, after that, then it stopped getting translated. I am really curious if there's a more dangerous peril going on. And I'm wondering. Who is putting these orders in the monsters' heads in the dungeons? Mm. And I'm wondering, where are they from? If they're being transported into the dungeons, where do they come from? Um, that's what I want to know about the system, because what is it? Is it a video game? Is it an izakai that we don't know about? Is it a entity? Because like he's able to go into a dungeon, defeat enemies, and because it's these special dungeons, it doesn't get these essence crystals from defeating them. It'll get like an item, and he's able to sell them to the system, and he's able to get gold points and also able to buy from it. So there is something there, like what is putting this implement in place? It's such a mystery, and whatchamacallit, I believe we're on in the translated chapters we're on like a hundred chapter 110 and i believe there's like 210 chapters no 270 there are 270 chapters we're on 110 that means we have 160 more chapters for all of our questions to be answered <laughs> so here's hoping it's sometime soon <laughs> <laughs> I'm patient. I'm pretty patient. I'm I, not. <laughs> well, like, okay. I'm the reason why I'm patient is because it has been months. Too long. That is too long. But I'm like, if I can wait a few months, I can wait a few more. I mean, I'm not gonna forget about it. There's been manga where I forgot about it, and I see the updated chapter, and I'm like, oh yeah, I yeah. was waiting for that one. <laughs> I was doing the same with Devils of Part-Timer. That wasn't updated for like a year or so. Then all of a sudden, five chapters. But I will wait and everything like that because there are all this stuff I'm watching and reading in the meantime. But it's just one of those stories I hope they don't forget about it because it is it has been captivating. There has been a really good story. Like Every now and again, you'll get these stories where there's a person that's overpowered for the sake of being overpowered. And it's just boring like a mary sue that's why mm, like i'm trying to think uh in the world with my smartphone that's an overpowered character for the sake of being overpowered yeah and death march to a parallel world wraps in of overpowered character for the sake of being overpowered yeah but then you do have the ones where you've got an overpowered character and it it does turn out oh this is actually okay it's not that bad like you've got one punch man but well, one punch man works because that's a kind of like a parody on the whole overpowered character anyway you've got like solo level and you've got overlord you've got uh, how not summon a demon lord but that's that is kind of funny but, and that time i got reincarnated as a slime yeah that time i got reincarnated as a slime that's really good but that's also not another overpowered for the sake of being over. Well, it is overpowered for the sake of being overpowered, but there's also different points. Where it's like, and it turns out he's not the strongest there. He's stronger than your average monster, but there are like demon lords that are stronger than him still. Which is also kind of making me wonder about in solo leveling. 
So Sung Jin Woo is able to get stronger. Like he has fought with opponents that are stronger than him, but then he pushes that limit. It's been a while since he's had like a real struggle with an opponent. And all of his opponents have been stronger. Like that 100 floor dungeon, every floor he went to, it was like a stronger opponent. One after another, stronger, then stronger, then stronger. But he's always able to meet up with that level and then level up. I'm just wondering how strong can these monsters be from the dungeon? Like, how strong is the system going to make them? Will he end up eventually fighting the system? We don't know. Right? Who's controlling the system? <laughs> Is it, is it God? <laughs> Maybe it's going to be like the Matrix and it's just like a man in a, sat in a room with a load of monitors. <laughs> Jeez Louise. I'll be pissed if that was the end. <laughs> and the poor question of the episode is? Poor question for this episode is what manga or anime have you seen and brushed off and went back and realized it was actually good. I thought of that one after we were talking about Violet Evergarden. <laughs> I was like, yeah, there's been somewhere I dismissed. I was like, eh, it's going to be a cliche. Don't want to see that. Don't want to read it. Eh. Well, I can think of one that I did that way. <laughs> and it's called That Time I Was Reincarnated as a Slime. <laughs> I'm Lihua Superfina, host of Podcasts Across Worlds. You can find me on all social media platforms at Lihua Superfina. Weekly, I upload videos about video games, manga, and candy masks on youtube.com slash Lihua Superfina. I also stream every Tuesday, Thursdays, and Saturdays on twitch.tv slash Lihua Superfina. Hi, I'm Spirit Shop co-host of podcast across worlds and also content creator streamer on the channel you'll find in the description and one of the upcoming shows is tinfoil talks where we deep dive into bullshit in video gaming we take a topic and we find out how it got there why it's there come up with some excuse until we believe it ourselves and then put it out into the stratosphere and that concludes our episode of podcast across worlds thank you all for tuning in keep reading manga Keep watching anime and keep listening to podcasts across worlds. We'll see you on the next episode. Since you're still here, how about leaving a like? And while you're at it, subscribe, ring the bell so you can get notifications. I want to give a huge, huge shout out to my Patreons and channel members because you all have been supporting the Superfina channel and it's not even required. So I really appreciate you. You are all in my heart. If you also want to support the Superfina channel, here's a link to the Patreon, along with a list of social media. All the links are available in the description below. Thank you so much for watching this video. I have much love, much aloha for y'all, and I will see you later.